Hello and welcome. Um, my, I would like to start by introducing myself. My, do you hear me, by the way? Because I feel like you're, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Bishra Polat, and I am 23 years old. I'm a senior student in Ondo Kuzme, at Ondo Kuzmais University. And I won't take too much time on myself. And I will directly start introducing my project. And the name of the project is The Voice Within, Empowering Refugees and Immigrants uh, Through Storytelling. Um, I said the voice within because I thought these people don't use their own, are not able to use their own voices, so I wanted to have this opportunity and use it as a voice. So I wanted to be their voice. So I will read some quotes and I would like you guys to think about it and think about what you feel after you read them and I will explain what they mean soon. Okay. I can't deny the fact that I had to face racism because they saw me as a part of a barbarian culture and it is heartbreaking how quick people, people are to judge you without knowing your story. For now, all I want is to be who I am without being judged and build my own life. I also wish this for everyone who is fighting this hard battle to have their human rights, which will be to love who they want to. So. Um, I have a few questions now, actually more than a few questions. Um, when was the last time you suffered injustice? And when was the last, last time you witnessed someone being judged unjustly? And I accept your witnessing those who judge with their eyes. And when was the last time you questioned yourself and thought if you were being unfair towards others? And the last one, what do you think our biggest fear is as a society? Well, in my opinion, as a society, we are scared of the unknown and unusual the most. Because we tend to be scared of what we can't understand, and we feel safer uh, when we know what lies ahead in front of us. So, on the other hand, what we don't know always disturbs our comfort zone. So we always want to stay in this familiar world and reject the unfamiliar one. Then we will be safer. And those two sentences that, I mean, quotes that I just read and displayed, belong to two girls who left their home to build a better life. The first one is um, from an Iraqi girl who left her home, who, le who left her home because she was uh, stuck between two cults in her country. So she needed to escape to build a better life and for her own safety. And the second one, belongs to a lesbian Iraqi girl who had to leave her home so she could be in a place where she could love whoever she wants to. Even though we see it as a human right in some places in the world, it's still not considered as a human right, unfortunately. So. And what they have in common is that they were seen as unusual in different ways. So knowing these stories, I listened and I wrote them, I feel that what we need as human beings is more empathy and much more kindness to understand each other. But the question is how? That was the question that motivated me to choose this topic, struggles of immigrants and refugees. So, about my objectives, um, my, obje my objectives are to break the barriers of the unknown. And from what I see, immigrants and refugees are mostly looked down on. My aim is to raise awareness about immigrants and refugees and to create a bit more understanding about their struggles. Stories, I mean, the stories that I wrote that I collected are a bit too um, emotionally destructive, so I decided that my target learners will be um, adult learners, preparation classes at universities, or my entourage, because I think um, emotionally destructive stories are not quite appropriate for students under 18 years old. 
And the reason why I chose these participants is because they are all between the ages of 18 and 30. That means they are people who are actively involved in the society. So they still could, could still inspire others to learn some lessons. And the process and how I got, um, how I came up with this idea is a little bit funny because I was just on YouTube and watching videos and then I saw this trailer of a movie, The Help. I don't know if you had seen this movie, but it's about a white American woman who wrote the issues of black maids in, I think, 1940s, I'm not sure. But she did it secretively and she turned these stories in a, into a book. So I thought I could do the same for immigrants and refugees and share their stories to inspire others so we can have more understanding about their struggles. And the other, no. And the biggest disadvantage I had, I, lo I lost so much time uh, looking for people who would like to share their stories because they were scared of their identities being revealed or they would um, risk their position because they had tried so much to be where to be at where they are now it, it wasn't easy for them to come to turkey and build a life so they didn't want to risk it that's why it was hard to find and then convince people to share their stories and coincidentally i didn't actually uh, plan that but all the characters in in the book are women and to me that was an opportunity to see that equality and inequality are real. They don't just um, exist in the books and they don't just exist as words. They, uh, people are actually going through inequality in many different aspects. And since I could not reveal their identities, I decided to name them after the constellation names. So that was my way to uh, name these women through the stars because I thought at the end of the day they will shine through the darkness. That was my inspiration. And after recording their voices, I just uh, started writing their stories. I elaborated on the stories a little bit, but I didn't do much because I didn't want to um, damage the essence of the stories. And then I sent the stories to a friend of mine who is a painter, and she started drawing incredible uh, pictures in my opinion. And then I turned them into a book. Yeah. So these are the drawings, and each drawing is related to each story. So, for example, the first, I don't know if it's very visible, yeah. Uh, the first picture is the um, picture that, uh, that belongs to an uh, Iraqi girl who was a lesbian and she left her home. So the hands, for example, represent the oppressive people's hands on her. And the colors on her breasts represent the colors of LGBTQ community. And the, uh, this mind uh, that also belongs to an Iraqi girl who, it's actually in the book, I'll, I will give you a spoiler, but I have to explain it. Um, she accidentally uh, took a step further and if she took a step back, then she would step on the mine uh, and she would just explode in the air. So that was, her that was a part of her story, so my friend just illustrated it. So this is the girl who took a further step back. She's from Iraq and she had to leave her home because of the battles between the cults in her country. And the problem she's having now, she's um, struggling to find a job because she feels that she is facing racism in Turkey because of her identity and she, is, she thinks she is considered as a part of a barbarian culture and to her and to me it's just heartbreaking because while looking for a job your identity shouldn't be a, a feature to be considered. The next one. And this is the girl that I just described. So, and Apart from her sexuality issues, she also had some issues with her family because they were extremely conservative and oppressive. And 
This one is a 19 years old girl from Syria, and it's, it was one of the most heartbreaking stories I've ever heard, because it's, she's just 19 years old, she's married, and instead of being in college, she's just looking after her son. She's taking, her, taking care of her son instead of being here with us, because that's the only option that she had. Yeah. And this is a girl from Uzbekistan, and she had to leave her country because of her oppressive family and, I mean, father, and then limitations of her country, so she wanted to um, just enhance her skills, and she just wanted to be herself without being judged because of her religious identity. And the result is that um, I managed to uh, get this book published thanks to my teachers with an incredible amount of help. And um, my hope is to teach to these adult learners how to have empathy towards these people because they really need it. I mean, living in the reality is something, but talking about it is something else. So these people are actually going through these things and we, would, we just look at them and think maybe, maybe they should just go back to their country and, you know, try to survive over there because we have our own problems, but put yourself in someone else's shoes and imagine being under the threat of a bomb every single morning you wake up and you try to stay alive every single day and you can't even have your own human rights, even though you should have, just like every human being in the world. So. I think that's it. If you have any questions, I would like to answer. I'm waiting. Yeah. I guess this is a big question. Um, or I have two questions. So the first one is, you, you've decided to direct this towards adult learners. Um, and I think it's really, really nicely done, and I've just been glancing through the stories. <coughs> they are moving, they're really powerful stories. Um, how are you going to use these with, with the learners that you're thinking about? Um, what sort of lessons would you design around them? What would you have learners do with these stories? I was uh, more like thinking of um, using this book in academic uh, reading classes, because I, as a student, took myself um, academic writing and academic reading classes, and um, I will just use it to, you know, inspire and make them see that this is the world we live in also. It's just not so pink and, you know, nice. So that will be my way. Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry, I, I want to try and pin down the, the, the specifics of what will you have people do here? Are you going to have them sort of write essays in response? What, what kinds of things are you going to ask? Maybe create their own stories or try to understand, uh, try to find some other stories of people, not just immigrants and refugees, but some foreigners around them. And that's, that's the kind of idea in my mind right now. I would like to elaborate on it. I thought it would be too depressive. Mm -hmm. I think you approach it with we have high school students here, so you can't read <laughs> They didn't read the book. Maybe not the whole book, but yeah. a story. <coughs> can we hide the books? Don't let them read. Hide the books. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just. Uh, would you read? No. <laughs> it's your homework. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, it's just um, every personality is different, so they might be too sensitive because they're in a phase where each individual in their um, 
way to adultness is just different. Some might be too sensitive, some might be even stronger than me. Just a guarantee. Any other question or comment? Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's just four stories right now. You said you recorded the story. Yeah. And you translated it into Yeah. They did not tell you the story in English. Some of them, yes, because um, actually two of them didn't know how to speak Turkish. So they knew English. So you have told the story in English? Yeah. So you Mostly. just only transcribed? Not really, because they uh, summarized. So I. Added a bit more spice. <laughs> because it would be too short and it wouldn't be too dramatic. Because I didn't. Yeah, I um, first I listened to the records and then wrote down the stories. Like I said, I spiced them up. And then uh, sent back the story so they would tell me, okay, I don't like this one, or I just cut out this part because it was their stories. I just actually wrote them. So they, I didn't want them to feel uncomfortable or vulner vulnerable because, like I said, they didn't want to be at risk. I already convinced them too hard because it's their privacy, so I didn't want to risk anything. You will have a better understanding. Yeah, well, either literature or, like I said, academic reading. So I would use it as a passage. So I would get my aim, you know, to inspire or to create understanding through my lesson. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I would like to thank you. Not really, <laughs> because yeah, because um, I I don't want to say I want to put it I don't want to put it that way, but mostly people are um, uh, keeping their distance from immigrants and refugees because um, they're like okay maybe you should focus on Turkish citizens instead of immigrants, but. You can't just bring all these people and then ignore them. If we're going to live all together, then we have to uh, find a solution how to you know, make it better. Because their condition is not as good as, as, it, as it seems. I actually witnessed it. Maybe I, I thought I was ignorant too. I was judgmental. Because we don't... I thought, okay, maybe they're sharing our opportunities. We already don't have much. I don't know. But it's not like that. Because... If I were in their shoes, I would just uh, go and try to find the best way to run away. I would do the same. So I understand them. One yeah. more question. Was it? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So I have a, a somewhat related question. Since immigration is a, can be a pretty controversial 
topic and one of your goals is to kind of build empathy. Have you thought about what if you used this in the classroom and you didn't get the kind of empathetic response you wanted or you had students maybe trying to be combative or arguing things that you didn't intend? How might you approach that if something like that came up in the classroom? Oh, uh, I didn't think about a negative response, but um, I think I would just try my best to um, convince them. I don't know, because it's just, like I said, they have human rights just like we do. So I think I will just try my best until I convince them. But I can't uh, force people to believe in something that they actually don't. So it comes from the heart, I guess. Yeah, I will think about it. Thank you. And yeah. The question was, uh, was it intentional to keep all the participants as female? No, it no, wasn't. He did try to find someone, uh, a man, to, to tell us all. Actually, I don't know how and why, but all these, at the end of it, I, I wrote down the stories and I said, okay, these are all women, and I can see a man out there who is struggling with something. I, it's just a coincidence. I didn't plan that. Yeah, okay, because, um, for example, that siren girl that I interviewed with, uh, she's, uh, she is actually hiding this whole thing from her husband because she's scared of his reaction. I guess men are more um, preserved, or I don't know if that's the right word. They like to keep their feelings to themselves. Interpersonal. Yeah, I mean, um, I shared uh, with two girls because, uh, the, uh, for example, the siren girl, she only could speak Turkish, so I can't share it with her. But I shared, I already shared it with two of them. Yeah, they have copies of the Not copies, the PDFs, because I just got the uh, copies. Got yeah. I, hope you do. You know, I will, I will. Even, I mean, uh, the siren girl who could, cannot speak Turkish, I think I, I will just uh, translate because she would like to know. And I'll just say a couple of things to, to support you and not support you at the same time. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm really curious about the I couldn't handle it when I was listening so, to it. I mean, I, I, I understand you want to protect them, but maybe like by trying to protect them, you're doing actually harm because like they watch all these things. In, in I know they and, do, but in school. And they have a sense of, okay, like this never happens to me. It only happens in movies. But these people have, have seen, experienced worse than, like things that, that are worse than, like, you know, the things that happen in I also imagine parents coming up to me and, what are you <laughs> reading to my child? I was imagining that kind of a situation and you know, it's not impossible. Yeah. 
So I, I'll, I'll just add to that. I, I, uh, I think it's a really important point. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that all of us as, as teachers have to consider as well, where on the one hand, we want to address real issues. We don't want the whole idea of, of this project is to not try to hide from these issues, but to try to put them out there in the classroom. Um, and yet at the same time, we know that there's a, a politics to everything, and in the classroom and the education system has that. So that the fact that you're sensitive to that is, is a good thing. I, I, I can't speak in detail. I've not read the stories yet. I, I only had a chance to, to I hope you will. Them. I will. I will. Thank well, you. Will. Um, but but it's, it's a sensitive issue, and it's something that I hope we all walk away from this constantly asking ourselves. But the problem is, I mean, the thing is, I, I didn't think in the beginning I was more thinking about equal, doing something about equality, women equality, because that's something that I am mostly, I mean, that I can relate to the most. But then I thought we are surrounded by all these people, and just because we are ignoring them and their problems, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Somehow we have to come up with a solution. Letting them uh, come to our country and then just leave them on their own, it doesn't make it any better and it won't. So we have to come up with something and maybe try to understand is the first step. So that's what I came up with. 